Anyway, you know, it seems like there has always been Perry Como in our lives. You know, you're young, you start dating, remember his romantic songs, uh, get married, have kids, raise a family, get old, and still there is Perry Como. He's been around for more than 50 years now, a tremendous career, and he's such an unassuming, wonderful guy in, in person. I spent some time with him during one of his recent appearances in this area, and uh, it's a, a pleasure to talk to him, and you don't see him that much in a, in a talking conversation. So I thought you would like to see a part of that conversation. And incidentally, he is a regular watcher of this show, so if you're watching, Perry, you know, we all love you. He's referring to what he sees on this show as we begin this conversation with Perry Como. <laughs> yeah, you know, you're crazy. You're, you're a nut on Why? television. Why? Why? You're the you kind of a nut that I would have liked to have been when I was doing a lot of that. Because you have a lot of fun doing it. I watch you, you know. I watch you a lot. You're talking about the, the health show. Yeah. The Lifetime show. Yeah, I've been Funny. doing that for a couple of years now, and it is kind of loose, and it is fun, and everybody's interested in health. Now, you had a little medical problem a couple months ago. I had ago. a, <clears throat> what they call a bronchial virus. It could be dangerous. Mm -hmm. I mean, it, uh, those things normally develop into a little pneumonia, which, of course, you guard against. Yeah. They put me in the hospital for a couple of weeks, and I had to cancel. We should have been through with our tour right now. Yeah. You had to cancel some dates? Canceled three. Well, how serious three, was it? Weeks. Well, I was in the hospital for two weeks, and I was recuperating for mm -hmm. a week and a half. You caught it on the road? Is that a virus? Uh, I think we caught it. I caught it in uh, Arizona. We went to Phoenix. It was 117, mm -hmm. and you go from that to 65, air conditioning, back to 100, you know, and uh, back and forth in three days, out. Yeah. And, and it's a terrible thing. You know, it gets you in your throat, and you can't eat anything, you can't swallow, and I lost 20 pounds, so then you get to worried about it a little bit. Sure. But I could stand. You know, I'm <laughs> getting a little... You look lean and fit right now, but did... Well, uh, I'm, I'm, fit. I'm not very lean, but... <laughs> Did it affect your voice at all? I don't think so. No, huh? No, I think uh, it cleared out a lot of stuff. You just had to lay in bed there for a couple yeah. of weeks? And relax. Blowing into bubbles and... Nurses make a big fuss over you? Yeah, a little. <laughs> <laughs> Is it nostalgic for you to come back to Long Island and, and be here again after spending so many years of your life and raising the family here? Yeah, we were here for, I guess, 30 years, my kids mm -hmm. Boy, well, Ronnie wasn't born here, but he was born in Chicago. But they went to school at St. Peter's. And you had the big, yeah, it, the uh, big house out in uh, Sands uh, Point? Sands Point, yeah. yeah. And, and I, we got rid of it because it was just kind of decaying out there. You know, We didn't use it, and the kids certainly didn't want it. Mm -hmm. But I go up and look at it once in a while. And I had mixed emotions about sure. getting rid of it. Did the people who lived there, I guess they know, hey, this is Perry Como's old house, huh? Uh, yeah, and the price went down. <laughs> did you ever and go the back? The neighborhood went down. Did you ever go back to the house to take a second look? Oh, yeah. Oh, did you? I went up one day, and it was, it was between. They were trying to sell it. Uh-huh. And I wanted to buy it, but I couldn't find who owned it because it had changed hands three or four times. Yeah. I was going to buy it back again. Uh-huh. And the lawns were always so... We had a good gardener. Mm -hmm. And the lawn was three feet high. Oh, yeah. We'd planted some, some trees, and my God, they were enormous. And I'm looking at the, the pool was all kind of. Oh, yeah, that's kind of sad. Isn't yeah, it? it is. Yeah. It is. I you... mean, I don't know why people do that, but I guess you know they, they run short. <laughs> but you do get attached to the houses you live in. There's so much of your past and so mm -hmm. much of your history there. To go back and see it, and it's terrible. It's really terrible. I shouldn't have gone. That's like going back to your hometown after I know. Yeah. 30, 40 years. Things change and. People that I knew 50 years ago are not there anymore. Did you ever go back to Cannonsburg? Oh, sure. Recently? Sure. Yeah. Is the barbershop still there where you work? Yeah. Were you really the head of that barbershop at 14 years of age? Yes. No kidding. Yes. You ran your own business then, huh? I wasn't any bigger or any smaller than I am right now. Uh-huh. I don't think I grew an inch. <laughs> at 14, I just stopped. I grew this way, but I didn't... But 14 years is pretty young, isn't it, to be a barber? Well, uh... And I had two guys who were twice as old as I am working for me. <laughs> Is that right? So I did very well, uh, you know. Yeah. Now, uh, when you get your hair cut, do you kind of, you know, check the guy out and make sure that he knows what he's doing? I get a little upset paying $50. Isn't that something? What'd you get for a haircut in those days? 50 cents. 50 cents. No. Maybe I made the wrong decision. <laughs> no. 
Perry, you're the seventh son of a seventh son. Is that right? right? You have anything? Do you think that has anything to do with your success? I mean, are you a superstitious person? No? Not really. But seventh son of a seventh son is kind of special, I think. Yeah, my dad was kind of special, too. He was a very relaxed man. He said, how do you, why are you so relaxed? I said, well, because I drink a lot. Yeah. Or whatever. Yeah. But I think some of that rubbed off on me. Did it, was he a singer? Was he a barber? No. No, he was a mill hand. Uh-huh. He had 13 children. Uh, and he was a great guy. Did he live long he lived, enough no. to know your success? <clears throat> no, he didn't. Uh, actually, he came to see me when I was with Ted Weems. Yeah. We, were, we worked in Pittsburgh. Of course, all my friends came in. They, mm -hmm. they parked their pick and shovel <laughs> in the lobby. Yeah. And when I came out, and I had him sitting in the front row. Mm -hmm. and I'm, I got my eye on him because, you know, he didn't know. Yeah. Uh, when I came out, of course, it turned the theater inside out. Yeah. And then I look back, and he's gone. He got And then he got scared the hell out of me. <laughs> so he ran out and went home. Oh, no. And I was kidding. petrified. I thought, well, what, you know, what could have happened to yeah. him? Yeah. So when I got home, I... And he said, well, he got scared because all this screaming and yelling. <laughs> He didn't know about that. Actually, I didn't know it was going to happen either. But uh, so I said, "Well, how uh, did you enjoy the show?" And he said, <laughs> "But he didn't see me." <laughs> I think he heard one song, and he, <laughs> he, he screwed. You know, he said, "Heck with it." And I said, "Well, what did you think?" I mean, was you know, and he looked at me and very seriously he looked at me and says, uh, "Brava, brava." Oh, Which means uh, wonderful. One, you know, good, nice. Yeah. But to him, uh, it was Gigli. Today would be Pavarotti. He didn't understand you know, the stuff we were doing. Yeah, you were doing heartaches with Ted Wins then. Yeah, you know, sure. with, with the scratcher. <laughs> it still sounds good. Yeah. Yeah, it does. I thought you might enjoy that conversation with uh, Perry Como. Thanks, Perry, very, very much.